Good afternoon. Well, let me just make sure that I am indeed live. Give me just one moment. Looks like I am good to go. Uh, so good afternoon. Carol Buckaloo with Inky Bee Stampers. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Rosie. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Another year. Uh, I don't know if I can deal with it. <laughs> no choice, though, really. Okay, so today I have um, a card made with the Daffodil Daydreams um, stamp set and the Daffodil Dyes. Uh, they used to be bundled. They were carried over in the annual catalog. Hi, Faith. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so they were carried over in the annual catalog. They are no longer bundled. Thank you, Mary. Thanks for joining. Um, but beautiful, uh, regardless. Uh, so they're no longer bundled, but they're, it, it's still a beautiful um, stamp set and dies. And uh, we are going to make this card today. And I've included a couple of online extras, or not online extras, online exclusives that Stampin' Up! has come out with um, Basics 3D embossing folders and the Elegant Borders dies. Uh, so just really pretty and um, I thought really great for Easter. So let's get started. Um, I wanted to share with you the, the Elegant Borders dies. Yeah, I like uh, baby blue and white together, and I just thought it was Easter-y. I don't know, it reminded me of Easter. So, you know, I just have some post-it tape here on this particular die that I'm going to be using. Um, but I wanted to point out that uh, you need to pay attention to how you put the die down. Um, the outside edge of this die, you can feel, if you run your finger along there, is the cutting edge. Um, and it goes all, you know, it's consistent all the way down the die. So this is the portion of the die that you want facing the edge of your cardstock. And then, you know, this would be the interior cutouts. Um, but the way you can tell is that, that that raised blade there on the edge of the die runs all the way down continuously. Um, hi, Karen. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. Um, and all I did was, um, I just lined this up and I used these two little kind of cutout endpoints as my guide when I was lining this up and I pushed that die all the way, the edge, uh, I pushed this all the way up to the edge of the cardstock and then just centered those two small, um, little nodule bump outs on the ends and made sure that I had that centered when I cut this. Um, so you can see that there is just enough room to squeak those on, um, but you wouldn't want them to cut out broken. Um, so you'll see that here in just a second, but I just wanted to share that with you. After I die cut this panel, this front panel, um, I then went ahead and embossed the panel. You would want to do the the elegant border die first before you do the embossing folder, just so that you don't squish down your embossing, your dry embossing. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, I already did pre-cut this just because the, the uh, stamp and cut and emboss makes my table shake something terrible. Um, so this panel is the exact same size as my card front. You can see that I use the elegant border die here to cut this out. And you can see all the texture um, from, the, um, from the Basics 3D embossing folder. And these folders, there's three in this set and they're all equally beautiful. But what I did after I, you know, die cut with the elegant border die, I just lined this up um, and I used the black mark um, on either side of the Stampin' Up! logo on the embossing folder. And I just lined this up like this. 
and I'm going to I'm going to point something out here in just a second and you guys can tell me which one you like but essentially you know line that up and then you're going to feed I drug my plates out um so I could show you but for an embossing folder you want the platform base one and then you want the edge of your embossing folder um you know facing up because you don't want to ruin your embossing folders and then plate four goes on top and it's going to run this way through your machine um so those are the plates you would use for the embossing folder. And then with the elegant border die, you're going to use your standard plates and no plate for. But I just wanted to share that with you real quick. So I already have this pre-cut, right? So on my original card, I did the elegant border die cut out and then I embossed it, but I embossed the entire panel after I did this cutout. And so on this one, I only place this in the embossing folder up to the uh, elegant border die cutout. Sorry, I was off screen. So tell me which one you prefer. I'm not really quite sure. I'm kind, I'm kind of mixed. I don't mind this one. Uh, I think it gives it kind of a cool look to have the embossing extend over, over the, um, you know, the cutouts there. But tell me what your thoughts are. I am going to go ahead and get this glued up to our card base. And uh, don't do what I did yesterday and make a total glue mess trying to get these tiny little um, pieces glued down. You don't need to cover every surface. I just shook my glue down and I can see that it is peeking out. And I want to apply just the tiniest of dots here and there on this cutout section. Um, but like I said yesterday, boy, did I have, <laughs> I had glue everywhere and just my glue bottle was kind of gunked up so I cleaned it really good. Uh, that matters when you're when you're gluing these tiny little pieces down. Um, and then once I get a few drops here and there on this section, we can go ahead and glue it up. I think that's probably sufficient. And hopefully I didn't put it on the wrong side. I think I'm good. That would have been a mess, huh? All right. Hey, stuff happens. It's paper and you can cut more out if you need to. And then I am going to just go ahead and kind of sandwich this. And the glue gives me a little bit of play. And I'm gonna push that down and make sure that uh, I'm covering my card base good there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just gently uh, push down that cutout section. There we go. I think we're good. You like the entire thing embossed you too, Rosie and Faith. Yeah. I, oh, and you too, Mary. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't too off base. I, um, you know, hey, it's up. It's everybody's preference, right? Um, but I thought it just kind of gave it an interesting look. I like this look too, uh, for that matter. All right, I am going to set that aside for now, and uh, let's go ahead and get a little bit of stamping done. And that's my inside panel, which I need. And I did a little pre-cutting. You'll be happy to know. But I am going to show you how I... Um, how I colored those daffodils, uh, just as an example. Um, so I'm going to use Memento ink and I'm stamping the large daffodil image and two of the small image and our inside panel will get the smaller daffodil image and all of these images are stamped in Memento ink. And let's go ahead and get inked up. I 
think I need to re-ink my memento pad. It's starting to, um, I can tell, starting to get a little dry in spots. Although I heard somebody mention the other day on a video, I was watching somebody's video and I don't recall who, but they mentioned that in the winter time, ink pads can become a little dry because of, I guess, the heat being on in your home. I'd never heard that. And that they tend to get a little juicier as the weather gets warmer. I'd never heard that before. Uh, and I thought that was kind of interesting. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp two of the butterflies, also in Memento ink. There we go. And then on my inside panel, I'm going to stamp this small, um, small daffodil, but just partially. Right here on the side. Oh, is that right, Karen? Oh, was it you that said that? Okay, yeah, I was, okay, yeah, I was watching your video the other day. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, it, I, I could see how that would happen. I'm gonna stamp this butterfly just above that small daffodil for our inside panel. And then I can go ahead and put the lid on my memento ink. And then I am going to stamp so I don't know if you guys have done this before, but when I made this card, I did the sentiment label three times. I took it off twice. I did it for a total of three times because I just wasn't happy with its position and the ink color. I stamped the sentiment in Memento Black ink and I just kept looking at it and looking at it. And so the second time it got stamped in Memento again and I re whoops, that's gonna make a mess. I jammed that stamp down too hard. Um, let me get that ink off before I make a total mess. <clears throat> and then the third time I'm like, you know what? I need to stamp the sentiment in, in Starry Sky. And, it, and, and it's a color I used in the card. Um, I just wanna make sure this is dry before I stamp my sentiment. Let's try not to jam that stamp stamp down so hard this time. And I'm just gonna pull this towards me. And I wanna stamp this sentiment off to the right a little bit um, because I am going to, um, focus there, Carol, um, because I'm gonna um, be putting a butterfly on the left side and hopefully this will stamp straight. Let's see how we do. So Karen, I'm gonna pay close attention as the, um, as the temperatures get a little bit warmer. I could totally see that happening um, for sure because I know our house gets really, really dry in the winter, right? Your skin gets dry in the winter uh, just from having heat on and that kind of thing. So interesting. Okay, I'm happy with that sentiment label. I'll go ahead and set that side for uh, aside for now. Guys, don't let me forget to put the bow on the card. <laughs> I am really, really good at forgetting. Um, so I used a number of um, Stampin' Blends. Not too, too many, um, but enough. And uh, I'm using the light shade of So Saffron to color in the entire daffodil surface. Um, and we'll go ahead and get that started. And oh, and you know, I learned a little trick. And I meant to bring, uh, I bring, I meant to bring a paper towel out here to my desk, and I forgot, of course. But if you ever need to use the color lifter, um, say you color outside the lines, which we all do, right? Get in a hurry or whatever. Um, and you use the color lifter to kind of, you know, lift that color up and so that your image looks good. Use a paper towel to blot where you use the color lifter. Like as soon as you 
lift the color to your satisfaction outside the line, right? Just blot it with a paper towel. And that kind of lifts some of that alcohol in the color lifter so that the color doesn't continue to run into that wet area from the alcohol marker, if, if I'm explaining that um, sufficiently. Um, but I found that it really, it really helps, especially with, um, if you're using darker colored or like a red, uh, for sure. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I, and I always forget to try that. And the other day I made a boo-boo when I was, uh, <laughs> thank you, Rosie. I don't know if I'll remember by the end of the video, but thank you. Hi, Akiko. Thanks for joining. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting that it, it really did seem to, to help. Um, because when you saturate, you know, the cardstock with that alcohol that's in the color lifter, um, that kind of gives the, the markers free room until that alcohol dries. Um, so I just thought I'd share that. And I am not the quickest colorer, that's for sure here, but I'll do my best, guys. May go over a little bit today. All right, let me get my inside panel daffodil here going. So I think I mentioned last week I got a new phone. And uh, I it has a, a really good camera on it. Well, put it this way. It has a much better camera than my old phone had. And so I was really looking forward to, I use my phone to do these videos, and I also use my phone to take photographs of my cards to put on, on my blog. And so I was really thrilled, right, to be using the new camera on the new phone, and I have had a heck of a time getting good photos. And it's the user, I'm sure, um, but I have like a photo, a little photo box, and I have sufficient lighting um, and all that. Uh, and I just haven't been able to get good photos. Now I'm coming in with the light shade of pumpkin pie. And I'm going to just drop in a little bit of shadow on the petals. Where they'd be falling in shadow. And nothing too, uh, nothing too elaborate here. Um, but anyway, so I, I've been playing with the phone, with the, with the camera on the phone and I think maybe I have it figured out. So this phone has all of these camera settings, like an abundance of, um, camera settings. And I've been kind of, I've been watching videos, <laughs> I've been tweaking the camera settings and, um, I, I think I think what I have to do is make the adjustments on the phone before I take the pictures. Um, and actually this phone will, will remember the camera settings. I can set it up so that it will remember my settings. Um, and you know, <laughs> the queen of coloring. I know I can't help myself. Um, now this is the dark shade of pumpkin pie. And what I'm going to do is, you know those fancy daffodils that are kind of multicolored? I have fancy daffodils on my Easter card. So I'm just using the brush tip of this Stampin' Blend and I'm just going around the outside of um, my daffodils and I'm gonna get the centers a little bit there where they show. And then I'm gonna come back with the Light So Saffron and go ahead and blend all of that in. <clears throat> so hopefully, you know, that will resolve my, um, my photo issues. I hope I'm going to keep working at it. Rome wasn't built in a day, I guess. Now, see, I just made a booby there. I don't have a paper tab, but I'm going to get my color lifter and see if I can fix that real quick. I'm just going to use my finger to blot it. I've done that before too. Um, but give that a try. I thought it, 
because sometimes, you know, when you use the color lifter, the, the color will bleed out again over the line. Um, just thought it was kind of interesting. Coming back with my light, um, hi, Akiko. Yeah, um, so yeah, I am able to save my settings when I change them. I What I have to change is the brightness and the exposure on my photos. I I can edit them after the fact too, but it would be much easier for me if I could just save the settings and always have those settings active. Um, of course, then if I want to take like a you know an outdoor picture or something, I don't know how that would work out. But uh, the new phones are mm, give you a lot of choices, that's for sure. So I'm just blending that light and dark pumpkin pie out a bit. Um, Mary's calling me the color queen. I Color blending and shadow and light is very important to me. So I'm, I'm kind of a stickler about it. If it drives you nuts, I'm sorry. Um, so on my original card, I used Granny Apple Green. And I have slowly been having to replace my markers uh, because I wear them out. Um, and uh, so I am going to, on this card, use Light Parakeet Party. Um, on my stems and get this coloring and um, wrapped up. But the parakeet party, I, I thought was kind of pretty. Um, I have trouble on this image telling where the stems run. So I color that whole section in there. But the parakeet party I thought was nice and nice and springy as well. And it works. Works pretty good. It's not as bright as the uh or it's brighter than the granny apple green. Um but we just have extra cheerful daffodils today, that's all. Yeah, point and shoot is nice. I have a digital Canon camera, my good camera. And um, I can set that to automatic, and it takes the most wonderful pictures <laughs> ever. Uh, but with the phones, you really got to, at least for fo you know photos of these cards, you really need to, uh, to pay attention. Uh, I got to come back here with this uh, dark pumpkin pie on this daffodil. I forgot him. To save time, I'm not going to shade these leaves and put you guys through that agony. Um, but I would come back in with the dark, the dark shade of um, Parakeet Party and shade underneath the blooms and then down one side of the petals, just to kind of indicate where the light's coming from. Let me finish up this daffodil though. So, my husband and I share a birthday month, and his birthday was March 6th, and we love, I don't know if you guys have them in your area, uh, but we have a Carrabba's restaurant, it's a chain, um, but really good, like, really good Italian food and steak, stuff like that, and we all are steak lovers, and um, so for his birthday, we went to Carabas, right, for dinner. And the last couple times we'd been there, uh, not very many people in the restaurant, and usually it it's just packed. It's crazy packed. And we figured that was probably just a result maybe from COVID. You know, people are starting to get back out now, but we thought, well, maybe it's just because, right? And... Uh, all right, I'm gonna come in and um, color the butterflies balmy blue and starry sky. And I'm just gonna color one of these because I actually um, pre-colored and pre-cut uh, these images out for you. I just wanted to share with you how I did the coloring. So we go to Carabas, right? The restaurant's maybe only half full. 
and they're doing carry out business and all that um, like crazy, like a lot of carry out business. And we sit down and we get our bread and we get our drinks and we're chit chatting and we order. And all of a sudden we kind of notice like, gee, our food's taken a really long time. And then we start to notice that, you know, the manager is going around to the tables and the waitress came back and we said, oh, is our food going to be out soon? And she said, I'll go check for you. You know, and she comes back and she says, yes, your, your dinner should be out in 10 minutes. Okay, great. And, uh, well, 10 minutes, 20 minutes came and went. The waitress finally came back and she tells us that, um, we are, we are short staffed chefs tonight and the manager is actually cooking, um, because we're so short staffed and, um, your, your dinner is going to be a bit longer. And then the manager did come out to the table and he's like, we can't tell you how long it's going to take for you to receive your meals. I was like, wow, <laughs> that has never happened before ever. And uh, yeah, so we actually had, ended up uh, leaving and um, yeah, we, we uh, came home and I think we picked up McDonald's hamburgers for his birthday dinner. So this Saturday night, we're going to a different restaurant, hopefully a better experience, and uh, we'll be celebrate, celebrating for real both of our birthdays this weekend. But crazy, crazy, crazy. And, and it's a shame because it's like one of our favorite places. Okay, I use the layering circle styles. Um, and this is Country Floral Lane 12 by 12 Designer Series Paper. Um, I didn't write it down and um, I almost forgot there. And so it is directional, right, with the with the stripes on it. And so when you are gluing up your um, your daffodils to the circle, um, there's a sample card. Um, you just want to maybe make sure that the lines are kind of going the same direction as the as the um, sentiment label. That's just me. Um, but that's how I would do it. Um, and I am going to glue our daffodils. So these are our pre-cut daffodils. I'm going to glue our daffodils at an angle onto um, this circle. And I only need glue. Let me see here. Let me kind of measure up. Um, just kind of from the bottom of that daffodil um, and just about a half an inch from the bottom of the stems. And because of the coloring, I can see that pretty clearly on the back. And I'm going to just get this glued down. And make sure my, my little stripes are going the right way. And I wanna put that at an angle, right about like that. Whoops, see how that glue moves around? That's a good thing though. All right. Just give that a good press. Well, thanks, Mary. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to dinner. We're going to the Concordville Inn, uh, an oldie but a goodie. And one thing that I did with my daffodils, um, the little stems, I kind of just took my fingernail and rolled those up a bit. Um, just to give them a little dimension, not the bottom, but just the tops there. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Oops, now they're sticking to me. Yeah, so hopefully, um, but, but where we're going Saturday night, they used to be open seven days a week and now they're only open um, my mom checked because she's actually the one that wanted to take us out this weekend. Um, and and um, they're, they're closed like three days out of a week now. And that's just crazy. And I think it's because places are having a hard time um, keeping, keeping help. It's the only thing I can think of. Oh, thank you, Akiko. 
Yeah, I love, I love baby blue and white together, balmy blue and white together. Um, and the pop of the yellows I thought was pretty. Springy. Supposed to be in the 60s here today. It's 59 degrees. It's almost, almost 60. Okay, I'm keeping my sentiment label. It's not attached yet, but I'm kind of keeping it placed just because I want to make sure, just kind of eyeball those, um, the stripes in the DSP. And I'm going to center this circle kind of between the embossed area of my card. And get that put down, and that's good. And then I did um, die cut a couple of um, a couple of butterflies, and I am going to need to actually color the butterfly here on my inside panel. Let's see which color I have here. So balmy blue in the center of our butterfly. And then the outside will be starry sky. I've never seen a butterfly those colors, but I'm sure there's one out there. Creative license, right? Yeah, it, it really is sad about the businesses and and what COVID has, has done to so many, um, so many businesses, so many restaurants, um, you know, have gone out of business, um, you know, small businesses. It's just been really hard. And I think that if businesses can't, um, you know, do online kind of stuff, um, it's, you know, it's, it's tough for them. Okay. Here's a little butterfly. He's all done. Whoops. Throw my markers around. All right. Um, before I do anything else to this card front, um, let me go ahead and get this in, inside panel. Into the card. How we doing on time? I'm already over. I knew I would be today with coloring. Takes me a long time to color. All righty. And all of the measurements for this card will be on my blog tomorrow. Uh, and this card was made for the Happy Inkin Thursday blog hop. Um, we have a theme challenge of spring. So this is what I came up with for my card for the, for the hop tomorrow. Okay, we can go ahead and add our um, sentiment label with Stampin' Dimensionals. My Stampin' Dimensionals, I hate when the backs come off or that the, the paper wants to come up with the dimensional. There we go. That should be good. I like to use my tweezers to hold my sentiment label when I'm putting it on. Um, just kind of helps me get everything straight. There we go. All right, on our little butterflies. Where is it? There it is. Um, I want to put a little bit of Wynn Costella on our butterflies here. And I know you're not going to be able to see that, but it uh, gives it some nice sparkle. And I'm going to do our little butterfly on the inside of the card as well. There we go. 
And for the butterflies, um, what I did was I just took them and uh, and I took the flat of my scissor blade, right, with the scissors closed, and I just kind of pushed down there um, across the middle of the butterfly just to give his little wings some dimension, makes them stand up a bit. And I'm gonna do that to both of them for the outside of the card. There we go. And I'm gonna apply glue on this first one to just half of the butterfly. And he is going to get adhered to the left side of the sentiment label. And then the second one, I'm gonna put glue down the center And I'm going to adhere this one, kind of the opposite angle up here in the right corner. And just hold him down for a second. <laughs> yeah, aren't they sweet little butterflies? I really like these butterflies. There's another pretty in the die set, the daffodil dies. There's another pretty butterfly. Um, but I like to just kind of tease their little wings up. Um, just, I think, add something to the card. Make a Stella cap back on. All right, ribbon. Don't let me forget the ribbon. And this is the Baker's Essential, Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. And I'm almost out of white. I've run out of black. Um, but I'm just going to cut a couple of lengths here of ribbon. And I need new snips. My snips are getting so dull. I asked my husband the other day if, we do have like a sharpener thing uh, and asked him if he thought I'd be able to sharpen my scissors, but I, I don't think I got an answer. I'm going to have to check it out and see if I can sharpen the blades. Oops. All right, that looks good. Grab my ribbon scissors that are sharp and just cut these little tails down. And I'm going to use a mini glue dot to put, um, hope the dogs don't start barking the FedEx guys on the street. I'm going to put my little ribbon here, kind of right where these little stems meet at the bottom. Right there. Okay. And the last thing to do is our envelope. And I forgot to stamp the butterfly on the front of the envelope. So when you're making your card, be sure to stamp your butterfly on the front of the envelope. I won't keep you extra here just for that. Uh, so real quick, Stampin' Up! is definitely going to be doing a color refresh when the new catalog comes out. So if you've got any favorite colors, um, you know, the in colors or, or otherwise, because we have no way of knowing what, you know, what's coming and what's going when they do this color refresh. Uh, so if you've got favorite colors and you're running low on cardstock or inks or re-inkers, anything like that, uh, Stampin' Blends, be sure to, um, you know, stock up before or really as soon as possible um, because word has gotten out that they are doing a color refresh. So you'll want to make sure that you can stock up on your favorites um, because we really don't know what what's coming and what's going. And, you know, they will sell out. So begin to sell out because they're not going to restock anything that they're going to retire. Okay, so that is uh, my card for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Pretty little Easter card. There's the butterfly. Um, pretty little card for Easter. Uh, hope you enjoy. Have a wonderful rest of the day. And I will see you next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.